as I get older, I find that question to be confusing or troubling. I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games. You know, like say 40 years ago, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. But now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic and millions of people playing simultaneously. And you see where things are going with virtual reality. Then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. How do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Tonight's topic is, uh, is the universe a computer simulation? We've got some highly thoughtful, talented, uh, respected people to weigh in on this. The more I learned about it later on as a physicist, the more struck I was that when you get deep down under the hood about how nature works, how can I be sure that this mathematical reality isn't actually some kind of game or, or simulation? In my research, I had found this very strange thing, error correct codes. Error correct codes are what make browsers work. So why were they in the equations that I was studying about quarks and leptons and supersymmetry? And that's what brought me to this very stark realization that I could no longer say that people like Max were crazy. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. We seem to see a pattern forming over here. Our universe is pixelated. The matter isn't as real and as solid as we'd hoped. Our reality can be shut down, and we are ultimately informational, virtual beings so comparable to a computer program that it isn't a big jump to accept that we are possibly. No, we are probably living in a computer simulation. You sold a gun to a murderer so you can play video games? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you spend all day shuffling words around, you can make anything sound bad, Morty. Here, check this out. guy who really started forcing scientists to take this a bit more seriously and gave this idea a bit more scientific street cred, I think, is uh, Nick Bostrom, my fellow Swede, and Nick Bostrom. We are almost certainly living in a simulation. It's a little bit complex, but it's really not more complex than most like educated people could probably get their heads around if they thought about it for half an hour, an hour, kind of it's actually pride. You know, there's this interesting argument by your colleague at Oxford, Nick Bostrom. He argues that the notion of a simulated universe, what do you think about that? I, I can't see how you could refuse it. I mean, I, I, I can't see how you would actually be sure that we're not. If the simulation hypothesis is valid, then we open the door to eternal life and resurrection and things that formerly have been discussed in the realm of religion. And the reason is really quite simple because as long as I have a computer that's not damaged, I can always rerun the program. If, if you're not sure at the end of the night whether you're actually simulated or not, my advice to you is go out there and live really interesting lives and do unexpected things so the simulators don't get bored and shut you down. <laughs> there you go. Add new sim. Let's make him neat. He's going to be outgoing to be a, um, a celebrity because I want him to be a celebrity. Sure. Nice. Oh my god. That is freaking hilarious. Ha! <laughs>